typically you wouldn't want to sample um, less than two days after a rainfall event. Luckily here in Maine, uh, we have very well-drained soils with lots of organic matter. So it's less of an issue here. Uh, there's never standing water. So we want to sieve it down to a coarse sieve. Um, it's about a quarter millimeter, or I'm sorry, quarter inch sieve. And we're trying to make sure that there are no rocks that get through. And then we want to take out any um, obvious roots um, or grass that may get in our sample as well. Yeah, and it's more material than, than we could possibly need. With, out of this, we could actually run several tests. We need 100 grams. We have a version of it that's used in laboratories and they have a device that reads it automatically, but it's still a good old-fashioned colorimetric test with a color chart that you can do yourself. And we created kind of an arbitrary scale for it of one to five, or zero to five. Zero being a, a completely lifeless soil, I've never ever had a soil test zero, but the probe starts at zero here at the beginning of the test. and. Every color unit here is a doubling of respiration. So you can see the scale goes up very rapidly. And, and if you do a lot of them at side by side and lay them all out, you can photograph them and preserve it that way. And it's actually, the human eye is amazing. We can distinguish small differences in color as accurately as a photometer when you have color, a range of colors side by side. So I tell people, don't ever just do one test. Do a couple at the same time, and then lay them side by side. You can see nuances of differences there. And I get lots of phone calls. I say, I can't believe it. And it was either too low, they're really upset if it's really low, or it was very high, and they wanted to know why was it very high. And we took one farm and mapped the CO2 every day through the whole season. This was a good growing season, moist soil. And look what it looked like. So the soil, as it warms up, is pushing out more and more CO2. So it's highest in the midsummer and then declines as the soil cools down. Um, of course, if you had no moisture in the soil, you'd have some very low numbers there. So what we're trying to do is just to move this kind of paradigm into soil testing and get people to start monitoring it. We're not saying we know exactly how to interpret it. But to start looking at the life of your soil is, is one of the important things.